In this case study, you'll quickly learn how I crunch through and clean a huge data set using only Excel VBA and, you guessed it, the advanced filter. I was contacted by a viewer who compiles annual rainfall statistics for his farm. He gets the data from a weather station in Australia. The rainfall statistics are recorded in five minute increments, meaning he has 288 data points to process. Now for the purposes of this tutorial, let's call him Steve on account of that's his name. Now Steve doesn't want 288 data points. Steve doesn't even want 10 data points. Steve wants one data point. That being the last data point recorded on the day. So it'll be something like five minutes to midnight or something like that. So what we've got to do is process 104,915 data points and process that down just to 365 data points using the Excel advanced filter. And let's do it now. Let's demo the process manually first, and then we'll do the code. We'll create three worksheet tabs, Source, Workings and Report. I then change the code names of the sheets to Sheet Source, Sheet Workings and Sheet Report. This makes the coding simpler. Let's paste in the rainfall data to the source sheet now. I then paste in some formats just for visual purposes and some advanced filter criteria headers. Then it's time to create the advanced filter extract range, being the data headers row. We copy this header row to the report sheet that will contain the summarized 365 rainfall data points and then widen the column widths. Next we copy the 104,915 rows of rainfall data from the source sheet to the working sheet and apply a date time format to the time column purely for cosmetic purposes. Then we add a year month day column. This just records the day and not the time. This is used to grab all rows related to a given day. We use the Excel text formula pointing to the time column to grab the year month day as text and then convert it to an integer value by wrapping it with the value function. Next the code will do a unique extract on the YMD column to produce one date for each day of the year. We highlight cells J1 to J2 as the criteria and L1 as the extract range. Remembering to select unique records only, otherwise all of the data in the YMD column will be extracted. We now have 365 individual days and we've got to loop over each of these and grab all data for each day in order to get the last entry for each day. We start by writing the first day in the days list to the criteria at J2. We now do another advanced filter using this criteria to get all info for that day, switching the extract range to 07 to V7. I just quickly scroll down to the end of this data range and the final item is the one we want, the measurement taken at timestamp 2359. So to get that, we're going to use the Excel max function to get the highest time value in column P, the time column, and that's going to form part of the criteria in order to extract that specific row from the 105,000 data rows. I've then populated the YMD column with today's date as well, but in hindsight that's overkill as the time criteria in cell 2 does the job just fine. Now we do another advanced filter using this new criteria to just get that time and day combination from the data and we've got the row that we wanted. We then paste that row into the record tab, taking note of the row that the record was pasted as the next record will have to go directly under that one. The loop then moves to the next record in the days list in column L, which is the 2nd of January and the process is repeated until every day has been loaded to the report worksheet. We can now start coding. Okay, so time to go through the code. We're going to start off with a subroutine called clean rainfall data. I've got three variables in it, three range variables, range data, range crit for the data source of an advanced filter and the criteria of an advanced filter. Range days is going to be the extract area of the advanced filter. So first of all, we're going to, I've got, I've created a routine called clear all data to basically clear out and reset the worksheet to its position when it's ready to run. So if we just step through, if we just step through that, so first of all, we've got sheet workings, sheet workings being the code name. And when I say the code name, I mean the name you can see here in your properties, we've got a tab name and a code name. The code name is the name that shows here in the properties when you've selected a sheet. And the tab name is the one that's on the name without the parentheses around it. So anyway, so with sheet workings, dot range a1 let's go to workings dot range a1 dot current region dot clear contents so that clears all the data out next we're going to clear out anything that would be in the criteria area 
it's already empty. We're now going to clear out everything that's in the range days area, L, which is l1.currentregion.offset1.clearContents, bang, that's gone. And finally, what it's going to do is it's going to clear out this piece of data here. Not necessary, actually, but just for tidiness, we, it does that. Finally, we have the report sheet and the code will clear out the data here and it's gone. So that's uh, clear data, everything's set to go. And now the next stage of code is going to write this data here into the workings area. And it uh, writes it with this uh, particular line. So if we just see, there you go, the data has come in. And now we're going to put in the, the year, month, day column, YMD into cell H1, there it is. And now we are going to get, a, we're going to reassign range workings to be all of this data. So for example, if I do range workings, in the immediate window, it's already set. So we're going to reassign range workings to the current region. And then using that, we're going to get the range for years, month, day, which will be the same size as this data range here, except it'll just be one column and one row less offset by one row. And that's what was happening here. And now we're writing in the formulas explained to you earlier, which is the value text B2YYMD and now it's going to convert that to a value. So now the spreadsheet will run faster because it's not recalculating all those functions needlessly. Now we need to get the unique day listing because if you look at all of this data here, it goes down to row 104916, which is 104,916 rows. So it's going to bring all that down to just 365 rows if that's how many days data have been recorded. So we go into that and we just do that with an advanced filter. So the extract range has been set to be L1, which is this, and the criteria range is this. You always have to have a criteria for the advanced filter, but even if it isn't being used, check out all of my other advanced filter videos which are listed in the description below and any other notes that I add, I will put into the description below. So let's do it. And there is the unique listing of days. If I end down on that, you can see it goes down to row 366, which would be 365 days when you count the header. So the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to loop over the days, grabbing each day as explained. We've got a variable called range day here okay and that range day is going to loop over each of these that, that range day variable and that's going to feed the loop so let's just do it so again range days that equals range days that current region and so what we're going to do is we've got we're setting up range crit again criteria criteria is uh j1 to j2 which is this will be the criteria and criteria watch time o1 to p2 so this is for further down the road when we're extracting just the last element for that day, the last recorded time for the day, that criteria will be used for that. And uh, sheet workings dot range oh seven dot count region dot resize one. So yeah, so it's that's the that's the uh, that is the extract range being set up there and range target is going to be on this sheet. So if I just uh, do range target that select there's range target but what we're going to have to do is it's going to have to be offset by one row let's go back to the workings so it's looping for each range day in range days so if it's a for each loop that loop that for each next loop will loop over every element in this range the first element it's got is 2019-01-01 and it's saying write that into the criteria value. So let's just do that and it's in. And now we do our first extract and there it is. So our first extract has extracted all the data to here. Meanwhile, you've got the function here, which is looking down the data and it's referred to here. So I guess that function could really just have been put in there. The last time it's 2359 basically. So if we look here, see it's got the 2359 because as soon as we did that advanced filter, that function updated. Now we're doing another advanced filter, but in this instance, the advanced filter, the first advanced filter was done with that being the criteria. Now the next line does it with this as the criteria, range crit with time and extract. There we go, the last element. Now what this is going to do is it's going to write range target. So, so first of all, what it's going to do is if we look here at range target that select, it's that 
the headers, but now the next line is range target equals range target dot offset one. So let's just execute that line. Now if I click on range target dot select, we can see we've got a range ready to receive the values that are in this particular line here. So just to prove that, let's type in range extension dot offset one dot select. And there you go. So that's so we got that there being written to that there. And I just it doesn't have to be selected. So let me just write over it. There you go. There's your first piece of data in. And if we do it again, we've written in the next day in the sequence. Range day is now the 2nd of February. So the range variable is pointing to this and we're going to get it to write it into here. So if I press F8 on the code, it should write it in. There we go. It's been written in. And now the first advanced filter is going to filter all of the data from this data source into here and now we're changing the we're now getting the last day and we're offsetting it and now if we go to the report tab and this line executes we have our next line of code and then this whole process just continues